scare them at three-quarter time, then they might give themselves to be a fair chance. Uh, but there's a lot of work to be done during this uh, next, I suppose, 30 minutes of football for Belpost Hill. I suppose what you can read from mis the misconduct sending off is that he's obviously said something. There's wasn't uh, sent off for strike or anything like that, so you assume he's either abused the umpire or abused another player in a way that the umpire just deems satisfactory to get him off. Just quickly, guys, I've got a, a report. No, I don't know how reliable it is, but um, apparently Cutter and uh, Lewis were walking back to the uh, goals uh, to the middle of the ground, um, chatting to each other, and Lewis uh, apparently used his, his elbow or his uh, his uh, fist to hit Cutter in the back of the neck, and that's what it was for. Okay, so. Uh we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to have the second half of the 2009 GFL Grand Final. Leased along by 18 points, and we're back after this. <laughs> Mold, unbelievable. Want some duck? A bit of dip would have been nice. <laughs> How long, Noel? Minute 30. Fuck it. Got half the rib cage on now, Chuck. Oh my god. Start of the third term here at East at uh, St Albans Reserve, 2009 JDFL Grand Final. Umpire's found a free kick. It's going to go to Bell Post Hill against Oppenlander. And David Holzfein at the back end of the centre square has the free kick for the Panthers. He chips the ball short to Pyle. Pyle takes the mark, plays on quickly, left foot kick towards half forward Carter. Runs in, takes the mark. He's got Tar further afield if he can get it to him quickly. Oh, he sets it up though. Coy comes back. Tar does well. Stands his ground, takes the mark. 50 out from goal. Chips the ball around the corner again. Sean Lewis has to run back with a fly to the footy. And Paisley takes the mark and handballs it away quickly. And they break free through Chamberlain. He gets it wide towards Coy. Now at half back. They chip the ball over the top to Jennings who was Good running kick. and runs away from Venner. Takes a bounce and runs free at half forward. Takes two bounces and still goes. Close the boundary line. Takes three bounces. 60 out. Goes with a left foot kick. Terrible off the boot. Scrobelak in front. Makes it pretty good. And he takes the mark. And will shoot for goal from 45 metres out. On a difficult angle. Gerges has gone back to him again, guys. And uh, this the third quarter. So you were right about that. the plan that they uh, had to keep Gerges at one end of the ground. So Scrobelak comes in, left foot kick, terrible off the boot looking, and he's missed it through for one behind, one goal, one his tally this afternoon. And they go to 8 6 54, the Eagles, bell post till 5 5 35. Buckley's Entertainment Centre third quarter scoreboard. What is that thing you were trying to feed me, Dale? It uh, looks like the carcass of a chook. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said no, because <laughs> he's spot on. There was no chook on the carcass. So now we're just waiting for the ball to come back over the fence. JB Pyle is uh, the man that's got the ball, and we will have the ball very shortly. A lot of people back there. There's a lot of souvenirs we had down there. I reckon when football's going over the fence today, but uh, the honesty of the crowd brought the ball back. So JB Pyle now kicks the ball out, goes out wide, goes looking for it, doesn't find Travis Fursland because Kloster arrives, but Fursland does well at ground level, kicks the ball round the corner, and David Holzfein now with the ball. So Holzfein has McNamara, who's just pushed forward of him. The kick is also good, so the young player in McNamara again goes looking for Farah in the middle of the ground, has players wide, but a two-on-one situation arrives, and the free kick is going to be given up there to Josh Coy. Good tackle, second man in. Don't know how Oppenlander actually got it received with the ball, but he's taking the free <laughs> kick. He now transfers play, goes looking for Jennings in front of May. He goes back and tries to collect it. May hot in his hammer. Tackle goes on, ball falls out, holding the decision, kick. and yeah. the ball's going to go to Michael Jennings. So Michael Jennings, about uh, 20 metres out from there, forward 50, gets up hobbling. Obviously uh, hurt the ankle in that tackle. Yeah, Robbie Moe wasn't too happy with the umpire's decision then. And Coy standing just behind him. That's where the handball's going to go, you would think. He's uh, not travelling too well. Holes finds aware of it. So they've just put pressure on the kicker now. So Michael Jennings loads up, goes in long, goes towards the forward line. Coming out, Scroblack doesn't take the mark. Tries to knock the ball back towards O'Leary, who's been good. Picked up by Fursland, kicks round the corner. Outside 50, oh. Holes find up, doesn't take the mark. Back at ground level, he works hard. 
Sees so Coy and the ball over the boundary line and will be thrown back into play. It was a bit of a bit of a shove. I suppose uh, Adam Scrubble, like, even though he doesn't take mark, he still brings the ball to ground level. And we just saw then the, the little knock on he tried to get to his teammate there. You know, Leary didn't come off for him in the end, but it shows that Scrubble's always thinking. So the ball back in the contest. The Liston spins out of trouble. Handballs back towards Kloster. No, it's not. It's Coy. Josh Coy. Push in the back, says Jace. So the ball, umpire now, plays on. Oh, I don't know what happened to that kick, but it wasn't kidding. Come off the boot too sweetly. Picked up there in the middle of the ground. And it's going to be fed forward from Belpo Hill by McNamara. McNamara kicks short. And the ball goes to Coy. So Coy. So now it's with Robbie May. So May now has the ball backwards of that uh, centre. So they're just contained possession now through the half back line. The ball kicked across the ground by Pyle. Pyle goes looking for Bott and finds him. So he plays on now. Scroblack about to come at him. Just changes his mind. Holds his ground. Goes out wide. The mark taken by Grigick. So Grigick with the ball. Again, the movement up the field. There's not a lot. Has shorter option. Goes inside looking for Fursland. Doesn't let him down. Takes the mark. Knocks Josh Coy over in the meantime, but that's okay. So again, the short kick. So they're playing a possession game, Bell Post Hill. They need to keep this game tight, and that's what they're doing. Just uh, playing possession. Martin also just another five metres away, but the kick this time goes looking for McNamara. Sets him a task. Kloster's there with pace, able to get away. Takes possession of the ball, kicks round the corner. Goes looking for and finds Jennings. Okay, Called the play on by the umpire. Kicks around the corner. Goes looking for Chamberlain. With him there is O'Hara. Three on one situation. Lima does well. Kicks there around the corner. Finds holes fine. Now Lewis has pushed forward. At centre half forward. All the space in front of him. Runs inside 50. Steadies on goal and goes bang and kicks the goal. Sean Lewis. Well done, Belpost Tool. Their first goal of the third quarter. The first. And that moves them along to six goals, five. East Geelong, eight goals, six. And we have gone five minutes Third quarter, Buckley's Entertainment Centre scoreboard. A lot of credit there has got to go to uh, Shane Limer. He was in a three-on-one situation there and he was able to get the ball forward to his uh, teammate. <laughs> Obviously won the free kick as well, but Holzfine moved the ball quickly and Lewis ran into the open goal. We've got the verdict. He, yep. he was sent off for misconduct. He was apparently spat. But under new VCFL rules, because it was for misconduct, he can actually be replaced after 20 minutes, but Nathan Lewis can't come back on. Okay. So he's done. So Nathan Lewis is done for the day, but they can replace him. So midway through the third term, Bell Post Hill will be back. 18 on the ground. They're down to 17 at the moment, but they've cut the margin to 13 points. Back to the middle. Fenner for Bell Post Hill. Up against Cameron for East Geelong. Umpire throws the ball in the air. Cameron gets it down beautifully to Chamberlain who runs onto it. Holes fine right next to him though for Bell Post Hill. Tries to worry him out of it. Oliver picked it up. Gave it away quickly towards Chamberlain. He can't uh, get there first. Carter can. Handballs it back to Fursland. Who's pushed across half back. Right foot kick around the corner. Close to the boundary line. Holes fine. Keeps it in. Has to get around Jennings though, can't do so. Umpire says it was too high. And it will be a free kick to Bell Post Hill on centre wing on the outer side to David Holes find. So, Holes find for the Panthers. Not much to kick to, not much movement. Going to go down the line. Gives it everything he's got, goes long. Looking for Tar, but he's got a couple against him. Should be a free kick for over the shoulder. And the Eagles to take it. We'll come back to Primke. So, at half back for East Geelong, Simon Primke, right foot kick towards half forward. From behind McInnes, Rip Martin off the football, umpire said play on, falls to Farrah. Handball to Lima, across half back, handball, back to Fursland, back to Lima, mucking around with it, now they get it. Little kick around the corner by Lima, ball in dispute, comes towards Martin. He needs to pick it up, he can't do so, neither can his teammate Jennings is over there. The umpire's found another high tackle. And it's going to go to Holzfind again. So <laughs> getting a couple of high ones. David Holzfind defensively on centre wing on the outer side. 6-5-41, Bell Post till East Geelong, 8-6-54. Well, he's Chip, a bit of a short fella. That might explain it. Chips the ball across to Lima. Still just outside defensive 50. This is the crucial kick. He chips the ball short to Fursland. He takes the mark, still on the defensive side. Fursland now for... Bell Post Hill. Goes back in board looking for Lima. Further afield though. Piles there as well. Sits for Lima and gets away in the centre square. Right foot tumbling punt towards Carter who's got a bit of space. And can wheel around on the right foot. Not much to kick to. So he goes as long as he can towards Tarr. Up against Veda. Tarr, good mark. Did well. Positioned himself. Now Justin Tarr. 60 out from goal. 
Kazina gives him a lead. He goes in that direction now. He's going to have a couple against him. Primke read it beautifully. Needs some support. Falls into Kazina's arms, but it's over the shoulder, was it? Ooh. He might have given a forearm jolt to the rib cage then, but okay. uh, mm. so there the was something there. But Free kick to Primke. Gets it away by hand to Coy. Tried to draw Kazina. Now he does. Gets it over the top to Paisley. He draws the player. Gets it to Oppenlander or himself. Himself wins. He goes to the middle. McInnes. Does well. Sets himself and handballs it away to Watson. They go with a right foot kick to Scrubber. Lack, who goes up. Can't take the mark off the back of the pack. Gergic handballs it away quickly to Bott. His handball further afield to Lima. Now is it going to sit for Lima though? He gets Good tackle. tackle by Watson. Scrubber back in there. Bott's against him also. Close to the boundary line. The ball spills free. Oh, the umpire says holding Ooh. the footy. So against Scrobelak. You don't often see that. He was laying on his back then too. It wasn't as if he was sitting over the top of the I football. I think if they spin him in like that, they, I think you not didn't, don't usually pay that free kick if they spin him over, turn him over. So defensive 50, Matthew Bott has the footy for Bell Post Hill. Not the case there. Oh, terrible kick though. Finds only Ryan Cameron who takes the mark for East Geelong. On centre wing. Got O'Leary Long. He goes in that direction now. And Bott. Which way is it going to bounce Ooh. through? In fact, it is through for one behind to Ryan Cameron. Not a bad kick. He's kicked it from nearly centre wing with the breeze. They go to 8 6 54. Is that right? 8 7. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say 8 7 55 East Geelong. And they lead Bell Post still 6 5 41. Buckley's Entertainment Centre, third quarter scoreboard. Nine minutes played. So again, Bell Post still holding out very well in this third quarter and early, early stages. So uh, it's about this time that East Geelong got on their bike last quarter in the first quarter. The ball going to Farrah in the back pocket, now to May. So the possession football's been played again. They did it last week and got caught out a couple of times by overpossessing, but uh, just have time and space in no hurry to move the ball forward. It's not pretty football, but they're doing it effectively. It's what they have to do. So Sean Lewis now gets the ball. So about seven kicks, and we've gone about 10 minutes, 20 metres around from the 50 metre arc. So Sean Lewis now with the ball. Uh, called a play on by the umpire. This time he kicks long, but kicks into the man of the mark. Arriving is Robbie May. Taps the ball back towards Sean Lewis. Needs support. It arrives in the name of Daniel Farrah. So Farrah has time. Kicks round the corner. Goes looking towards Fursley. Positions himself well. Liston gets the ball to the ground. Picked up there by Chamberlain. Went to the right foot. Went back. Put himself under pressure. Handball over, but the uh, free kick has been given to Bell Post Hill. Too long with the ball. So David Holzfein has done well early in this third quarter. Kicks the ball round the boundary line. Goes looking for and will find. No, he won't. Oh, yes, there is a free kick over the shoulder. And player there is Matthew Ellis. So Matthew Ellis has been used as a key forward today. But uh, with that pace, I suppose you can afford to do that. He now has an option to go backwards. That's where he does. It had to be a good kick and was. And finds Brad Martin. Pizzano is leading on this side of the ground. I think he's not going to kick 80, mate. So you better push up the ground and get closer to the ball. <laughs> But Robbie May again has the ball, so Martin and May. And now the short kick comes in and Sean Lewis comes up, presents well. So they're very patient with the ball, Bell Post Hill. That's what they need to beat. This time it's a longer kick. Goes looking for Venner. He's in best position. Ball gets over the top towards Kavtka. Arriving there was also Hylett. And Hylett's quite prepared to see the ball go over the boundary line. And will be thrown back into play. This time, Bell Post Hill's attacking into the ground. Half forward line. Ten and a half minutes gone. Third quarter's scoreboard sees Bell Post till a five, sorry, six goal five. They trail East Geelong eight seven. So boundary throw in from the front of the contest. Kavka, Watson's going to be on his hammer, and he's happy to see it over the boundary line again for a throw in. Still on half forward. And Jake, they'll be happy, Bell Post Hill, to keep the play like this. Just try and bottle it up. I suppose, it, yeah. I suppose it's only going to be value of any value to them if they can get a. Get a few goals on the board themselves, but I suppose I'll have the eight of the breeze in the last quarter. So if they can hang, hang on for the rest of this quarter, then there's still every chance, I guess. So from the ruck contest, Liston followed it back. Is that holding the ball? The umpire said play on. He's hatched it. The umpire said no, he hasn't. Pisano was over the top of him. The umpire will ball it up. Inside 50 for Bell Post Hill, northern end of the ground. They trail by 14 points. We've been playing nearly 12 minutes in the third term. Game has stagnated, though, hasn't it? We've often seen that in third quarters this year. So ball up. Cameron, big thump away. Might sit for Oppenlander. Coming the other way, Watson. East along with the numbers. They're out now. Liston at half back. Goes long towards the leader. Kloster goes up. Takes the mark on his chest. On centre wing on the outer side. Scrobelak gives him a lead now. He goes in that direction. There's the pass. And there's no mark taken. Gergic did pretty well. Taps it back towards uh, Coy Ryan. Gets it away to Hoey. Back to Coy. Just gets uh, slung as he gets the kick away. And it was enough to give Brad Martin the mark. He chips the ball back. 
towards defensive 50. Fursland has been pretty good in this quarter. Chips the ball over the top. Oh, short. Hoey set it up for Rob May. Hoey against him. Close to the boundary line. Hoey over the top of it. May also there fighting hard for it now. It's spilled free. And it's off hands out of bounds for a throw in. 60 around from the East Geelong goal. So still into attack. And a boundary throw in for Scrobelak and for Gergic to do the ruck work. Scrobelak tried to get it over the back of the contest. Holzbein read it better. Breaks free at half back, chips the ball out wide. Chamberlain kept his eye on it, so did Sean Lewis, and he took the mark. On centre wing plays on. Right foot kick long to looking for Kavka. Holds up in the breeze. Kavka in front, takes the mark, does well in front of Hylett. So moving it along the line. Bell post hill. Kavka, true centre wing on the outer side. So, he goes down the line further towards half four, Tar. But uh, holding up Primke, oh, took kick. the mark. Or over the shoulder, which way you like. Simon, both. Simon Primke will take the free kick for the Eagles. And he might switch play. Handballs it back to Danny Liston. Still inside defensive 50, chips it to O'Hara, takes the mark. Liston tries to break free, but uh, he's calling Kloster long. He goes in that direction now, in the middle of the ground. Kloster with a long lead, goes oh. up! Makes a great mark, Ryan Kloster. He's got a good leap, doesn't yeah, he? he's got a fantastic leap. Now on a long lead, Sean O'Leary goes in that direction. Not going to sit there, though. Coming out bot, and O'Leary falls for O'Leary. Handball back oh. to McInnes, tapped it back oh. to O'Leary. <laughs> Intelligently, 40 metres out. Bread and butter for Sean O'Leary. <laughs> Bang! Oh. Goal! And Sean O'Leary has put his third on the board. And the ninth for East Geelong. They go to 9 7 61. They lead Bell Post Hill 6 5 41. Buckley's Entertainment Centre, third quarter scoreboard. 14 minutes gone. He's a class act, isn't he, Sean O'Leary? There was never any doubt in anyone's mind that he'd kick that goal. And that's the second time today that uh, McInnes, who's he's actually a pretty big man when you look at him, but just those dinky little knock ons. He's set up two goals in this game so far for East Geelong, so he's certainly <laughs> playing his role. But you'd often see players just grab that. All in that situation and they'd get wrapped up and you you wouldn't think too much of it. But McGuinness had the knowledge there and the vision to punch that ball back into space because he knew O'Leary was still there and it's paid off in spades there. And I'll tell you what, I don't see Belpo still getting anywhere near East Geelong. Just quickly, guys, Drysdale are up by 47 points. Thank you very much. News down the line for Drysdale. Oh. Up and uh, looking the goods and the uh, Ballerine grand final. Ball's tapped out in the middle of the ground. It goes towards Holes Fine. Advantage is now being played. He plays on. Goes short looking for Kafka. He takes the mark out in front of Highland. Doesn't waste any time this time. And spins and goes back towards the goal square. Kazina, best plays. Paisley gets the ball to the bottom of the contest. Lewis there. He just needed to tap the ball there by uh, Kazina. But unfortunately couldn't get a toe to the ball. And the ball is cleared out of the fence and goes wide. Chamberlain has the ball on this half back line. He'll load this up and go towards half forward. It's a nice looking kick. Goes looking for McGuinness. Martin feeds him underneath the ball. Gets to the back of the contest. O'Leary can be smart. Has the ball. Tackled. Good chase there by Bot. Ball's put into play and it's held up there by Lima. Spins round the corner. Tries to kick round the corner. Didn't get the depth on it. Goes back to Coy to Scromelak. And the big fella's looking for the handball over the top. Goes to O'Hara. O'Hara into goal. And as it was in the first quarter, they've just put the foot down. Dean O'Hara hits first. The 10th goal now to East Geelong. 10-7, 67. 6-5, Bell Post Hill. We've gone 15, nearly 16 minutes. Third quarter, Buckley's Entertainment Centre scoreboard. Yeah, we've seen all, all throughout the game that East Geelong, they've sort of put the foot down, as you said, uh, when, it, when it matters. And although Bell Post Hill, they've, you know, they've hung on for those, that, that first part of each, uh, both the, the first and third quarter when East Geelong have had the breeze, Bell Post Hill have done a good job at the start of those quarters in, in restraining... Uh, East Geelong, but just as the quarter wears on, we always see uh, East Geelong pull away. So it would be incredibly frustrating for the Bell Post Hill coaching panel to, to see that happen, all the good work go to waste at the end of the quarters. 26 points of difference. Middle stages of the third term. Venner back in the ruck, up against Cameron. He gets it down beautifully to Cormac, to Chamberlain. Right foot kick to half forward. Tapped away by Ryan Coy. Sits over the top of the footy now, gets away. Looking for a handball, turns around, kicks the goal himself, does he? 40 metres out. Goes high towards the goal square. O'Leary used his body, but over the back and through for one behind. So they go to 10-8, 68 East Geelong. They lead Bell Post Hill 6-5, 41. Buckley's Entertainment Centre, third quarter scoreboard. Lima quickly to play on from the goal square. Goes out and finds Grigick in the back pocket. And now he's looking to go further down the field. McIlvaney by himself. Or the pressure arrives from O'Hara, but he's good enough to take the mark. So McIlvaney, Lee McIlvaney in the side today. It's now kicking the ball towards centre wing. Just guides the ball towards Robbie May from behind. The spoil came from Watson, but I think he's been interfered there, Robbie May. And the free kick goes to the Bell Post Hill coach. 
Sarge. MMA. What about Trial Star? That's unbelievable. Hmm. Football's a funny game. They'll pay an 11 bucks to win that game, you know, don't they? Ball now has been kicked backwards and found Lima. So Lima has now crossed over the mark, called the play on by the umpire. Can go across the ground, but decides to go short. Goes looking for Ellis. Chipping in is Coy. So now the turnover occurs once again. Player leading up the ground is Scroblack. That's the direction he goes in. Gregor killed hand in there. Good strong spoil. And the ball goes over the boundary line and be pushed back into play. He's got to get the arms out there, Scrub. He went to take that on the chest. Gergis has obviously got a good set of uh, spoiling fists there, long gangly arms, and he's... Done the job pretty well on Scrublack when in the moments of the game where he's been playing on him. That's Spell Post Hill's biggest problem. They need a couple of Brent Gergages, one at each end of the ground. So umpire now about to restart play. Throws the ball back in. Usually a good throw into the, the breeze. Scrublack just knocks it forward, finds Gloucester, runs to half forward, kicks round the corner. Can't bring it back anywhere near far enough, and it's gone over the boundary line. Oh, thought that was... No, it wasn't. It was through <laughs> for a minor score. Aussie Jones point that one. It was. Point that wasn't there. That's it. Ten goals, nine. Now East Geelong, six goals, five. Bell post till 18 minutes gone. Third quarter, Buckley's Entertainment Centre scoreboard. Dale Jenkins from fullback for Bell post Hill. He's been pretty quiet today, hasn't he? He chips the ball in short and finds Gergic. So in the right back pocket, Gergic. Goes long now, looking for McIlvenny and Venner. Venner's there, Scrobelak punched away at the back. Venner just taps it on. Two on one, East Geelong, Howie. Holes fine comes at him. He tries to get it back around. Dangerous kick, Tar to come at Primke. Primke does well. Oh. And that's a bit late. And uh, Primke's laying on the ground. Tar and Ryan Coy look at each other. And it was a bit late. It should be 50, I think. The but, well, I think he's getting, getting sent off. Oh, His is. card's coming out. So I'll be down to 16, the way they're going. The emergency umpire's on as well. Primke's... Yeah, there we go, yellow card for yellow Tar. Card. So Tar's off for 15. They're down to 16 now, uh, Bell Post Hill. And the blood rule for Primke. And he cops plenty of hits, doesn't he, Primke? Yeah, he always he flies back with, yeah. against the flight of the board. He must have one of them heads. <laughs> yeah, but that always just cops a... Well, I think he's actually got a bent nose from the other week, the incident the other week where we saw the clash down in the uh, southern end of the ground. So he's probably still hasn't fully recovered for that one, and now he's copped another one. So Tar's off, and Pyle's coming on for Kazina. And uh, he's getting the cheers of the crowd. The Austin Tar as he runs to the uh, bench. So Primke is coming from the ground as well with the blood rule. So down to 16 now, Bell Post Hill, and 50 as well. So Dino O'Hara's got the football and will come down towards half forward. Primke's off the ground. All th he's in range. All, all things happening in the box. Just decided I'd fall out of my seat there, guys. Cutterjar on for Primke. And Dino O'Hara coming down towards uh, the 50-metre mm. line. It's all start. Oh, we got a streaker! <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> 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 Sensational! <laughs> <laughs> uh, streaker at the other end of the ground, so... <laughs> Doing that's what, cartwheels. That's what live TV does for you, but friends. He's uh, running off the ground, get out of the way. He, he's trying to get off the ground and nobody will let him. And he might run into a couple of people from the constabulary, I think, if he runs that way. He's off the ground now. So Dino Hara has the football at the southern end of the ground. 55 out. He's kicked one goal this afternoon. He comes in now, 60 metres out. Great kick, that's straight through the middle. Dino Hara has put his second on the board. And East Geelong's 11th. They go to 11-9, 75. And they lead Bell Post Hill 6 5 41. Buckley's Entertainment Centre, third quarter scoreboard, 21 minutes played. Well, I almost forgot there was a game of footy on there with the uh, <laughs> alternative. I think I watched a uh, show during the week, 15 minutes of fame, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, 15 yeah. seconds of fame. Well, well he's got his he there. Need, he needed a suntan, didn't he? Yep. He did. He was a bit white, <laughs> a bit pasty. But I suppose talking about the game, uh, it's all starting to unravel for Bell Post Hill, isn't it? Having two of their most influential players sent off the ground is not going to help their cause at all. And to be honest, even if they did have 18 out there at the moment, I still don't see how they'd be getting anywhere near us. Geelong. We're just basking in the glory. So ball back in the middle again. Cameron up over the top. Holes fine. Picks it off. Can't get a clean kick away, but Carter comes in. Picks the ball up. Goes in towards centre half forward. Oh. May, three on one. Don't know how he's going to win this one contest, but Vetter knocks the ball forward. Kavka reads it. Oh, hands the ball over. Umpire says that's dropping the ball, and I agree from back here. So umpire, good decision. Mark Vetter, good tackle. He now kicks the ball towards centre wing. So the target is and will find the player in Oliver. On centre wing, handballs back into Oliver. Uh, Oppenlander this time, sorry. Kicks 
in long. Life Scrub. quick kick. Ooh. Oh, Scrubble and McGinnis went back with the flight of the ball. Picked up there by Jenkins. Goes back to Lima. Ball spills out. Josh Coy. Oh, Ooh. round the corner. Hit the post. Minor score. 11 goals, 10 now to East Geelong. And they lead Bell Post still 6 goals, 5. 22 and a half minutes gone. Third quarter, Buckley's Entertainment Centre scoreboard. Great pressure in the forward line by East Geelong players as well. Those Coy brothers are wreaking Oh, and there's pressure again. Lima's kick into three on one. McInnes handballed it in front of Josh Coy. Kick around the shoulder. Oh, he's just missed one goal to his personal tally. They go to 11-11-77 East Geelong. <coughs> they lead Bell Post Hill 6-5-41. Buckley's Entertainment Centre, third quarter scoreboard. Jamie Pyle's going to have a, an opportunity to do the kicking in on this occasion. There's a big kick of the football when he wants to be as well. A few heads down out there for the Panthers at the moment. They're going to need a spark from somewhere if they're going to get back into this contest. Pyle at full back, short. Finds Farrah in the right back pocket. Not much to kick to. Gurgic telling him to go wide. He's got O'Hara against him. Decides to switch play across the opposite side. Back pocket. Pisano <coughs> takes the mark. Still not much to kick to, though. East Geelong's zone has pushed across pretty effectively. They've got two extras anyway. He goes up the line, looking for Venner, the big fella, against Oppenlander. He goes up. Oppenlander does pretty well. Good spoil. Good spoil from behind and sees it over the line for a throw-in 60 metres around from the East Geelong goal. Certainly conceding a few centimetres to Venner as well, Oppenlander. Do uh, great Bell effort. Post still realise they can send someone back on? Don't know. Haven't well, remember, we worked out last week. It must be 20 minutes because we've seen all season long. We thought it's been 15 minutes, but... We've gone 23 in this quarter. Well, ball, there you go. Two minutes to go before the siren finished in the last, so uh, very interesting. Ball now back through the centre of the ground. Kafka working hard. One on four, but the numbers obviously win out. Howie goes inside, finds Primke, steps around Kafka. Good tackle, and that's dropping the ball. So, Rob Kafka, well done. Earns a spot there for a uh, free kick. And there's not much forward of the contest. There's about eight East Geelong players in front of him. So I'm not too sure where he's going to go to. Has the ball now and decides to chip the ball wide. I don't know if that was a Risky. great kick. Brinkley comes out, meets the ball. Holes fine, does well. Up off the ground quickly. Now the support arrives for East Geelong. Oh, Picked great up there work, and the uh, numbers are going, are going to win out. The handball too strong. Goes over the top. Hylett goes back and collects it. Steadies himself. Runs inside. Kicks towards Coy. In front. Ah, but Furslin slips in front and takes a strong mark. He's certainly been all right for Belpost today, Furzlin. He's done his job. Been very good, Trav Furzlin. Trav Furzlin now kicks the ball in towards half forward. Mark there, Paisley slips in front of Ellis. A small target, as we said, but has been mobile. Sam Paisley with the ball, East Geelong, going back into attack. Kicks towards centre half forward, McGuinness out. Both players miss the ball, tap down. Hands up with Martin. No, he doesn't pick the ball up. Plucked out there by McGuinness again. Another quick feed forward. Runs wide to O'Hara. Him and Liston run into each other. The ball's now at the back of the contest, picked up by Coy. He kicks around the corner and finds his brother and Josh. He can step inside 50, go to scroll black or go for goal. Oh. Goes for goal. An ill-directed kick goes across the face, lands in the uh, forward half. And now Grigic for Belpost Hill picks the ball up. Runners for Belpost Hill is Fantella. And from the back of centre wing, picks the ball up. Carries his full distance, kicks wide and long. But again, slipping in is player in Primke with Bot coming on the ground to obviously just increase their numbers by one, but maybe a bit too late. Ball kicked in quickly, goes towards Mick O'Leary. He stands his ground and takes a mark. <laughs> He's been battered from pillar to post today, <laughs> Michael O'Leary. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you just watch, his, it'll, it'll open up again, his, his wound that he's got in his face, and he'll have to go off and not take his kick. So hasn't had a lot of game time today, Mick, but uh, has Through been no fault of his a few own. goals, running off the half-back line in his time. This time a set shot from 40 metres out, kick from 45. Has plenty of time over the ball, comes in now, just guides the ball. I don't think it's got the accuracy and better go back to the back line, son. <laughs> so that's 11 goals, 12. The game could be well and truly dusted in this quarter. They've had a number of shots at goal, 11, 12, 6 goals, 5. Bell Post still 26 minutes gone, third <gasps> quarter. Oh, dangerous kick in by Gergic, short to Farrah, just found him. Took the mark on the ground. So Farrah just chips the ball wide, looking for Furslin. And he takes the mark just inside the boundary line. <coughs> Venner gives him a lead. Howie's with him. He goes in that direction now. Primke's there as well. He goes up. Great oh, mark, oh, oh. Simon Primke. What a superstar. Fantastic. Thought about the short chip. He's got Howie. He goes further afield, though. Sets Oppenlander a bit of a task. Has to run onto it. Oppenlander, great oh. mark. Goal. At 50, and uh, is a good kick for goal too, Justin Oppenlander for distance. So, 
Yeah, It'll shoot for goal straight from straight. 50. Goal post height. So Justin Oppenlander, who hasn't kicked a goal this afternoon. Jennings coming back on the ground too, guys, for each long. I think he's spent a bit of time this quarter on the bench, so he'll be raring to go in the last quarter. So this to make the margin, 43 points. Oppenlander to come in, straight in front, 50 out. And I think the Breeze has just taken it away through for one behind. So they go to 11-13-79 East Geelong. They lead Bell Post Hill 6-5-41. Buckley's Entertainment Centre third quarter scoreboard. 28 minutes played. I can't help but think about the uh, semi-final last quarter, though. That's, that's stuck in the back of my mind, Jason. Yes, Bell Post Hill, we can't write them off just yet because they almost got over the line last time. 44, points, margin, down, 44 points down they were at three-quarter time. And similar scenario with players uh, off the ground and... I don't know, maybe it's not over yet. <coughs> You'd be a brave man, I think, to call that. And uh, Brent Grigick has the ball at full back. Now just waiting for the ball to be brought back into play. Decides to go to the far side of the ground. Kicks out, looking for Venner. He has to mark it and does so. So the big fella puts his arm up. Running player is Jenkins. I don't know why he's in a rush to get rid of it, because Jenkins didn't want the ball, I don't think. But now he plays through. Half back, kicks towards centre wing. Kavka leads up. Traps the ball well. He's done that well on a number of occasions today. But the kick's not good. And goes well out of bounds. <laughs> It's gone on to Boundary Road. Very close to it. <laughs> so at the 28 and a half minute mark, third quarter, East Geelong, 44 point leaders at this stage, and Oppen landed to put them back into attack with a good kick from that position. As players short, I don't know why Venner's pushing forward for, he needs to be back and covering <laughs> Scrobelak. Cody Watson all by himself at half forward. They've got a number of players, so the ball's now kicked inside, goes in towards centre forward, and Robbie Howard Chamberlain takes the mark as the siren sounds. To end the third quarter here at St Norman's Reserve, 11 goals, 13 to the East Geelong side. They lead the Bell Post Hill, who are 6 goals, 5. Goal kickers, Dale, at three-quarter time. <coughs> Goal kickers for East Geelong, Sean O'Leary with three, Dean O'Hara, two, Pat Howey, two. Goal sweets to Josh Coy, Ryan Coy, Ryan Kloster, Adam Scrobelak, and for Bell Post Hill, two goals to Sean Lewis, one apiece to Robbie May, Jamie Pyle, Rob Kavka, and Andrew Venner. So it is three-quarter time in the 2009 GDFL Grand Final. East, Geel uh, East Geelong 11-13-79, leading Bell Post till 6-5-41. We'll take a break and be back with the final quarter action for season 2009 live and exclusive on Channel 31. Back after this.